mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome everyone to our service of morning worship this morning. It's really lovely to see you all here. And we're going to stand to see our, sing our opening hymn, which I've lost my notice sheet, so I don't know what number it is. <laughs> it's number 16. Or hail the power of Jesus' name.
We place the saints as well as the pedestals. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away any wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, may we so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to sing the Jubilati, which is number 371. If you're able, you please stand. <laughs> A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason I will not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God 
put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all the things under his feet and has made him the head over all the things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he put the sheep at his right hand, and the goat at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food? Or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you? Or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those in his left hand, You that have accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not take care of you. And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the servant and servant David, through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all the haters, to show mercy to our ancestors, 
and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now let us sing again. When Vivian asked me if I take this service, I said, I had one request, and there was no compromise on this. I wanted the next hymn, which is King of Kings, Majesty. To me, it's the most wonderful hymn there is. It's a modern hymn, and for the Feast of Christ the King, I think it's very appropriate. Unfortunately, most of you don't know it, but the choir has been very good, and they've learned it. So, they're going to sing the first verse, and then we're going to go back to it, and you can all join in. Hopefully. Now, I know one or two, I know Peter knows it, I know Vivian knows it, and Peter knows it, and about two Peters know it. <laughs> And Robert should know it as well. So, there's one or two of us who know it, but please, join in if you do know it. But the choir will do the first verse, and then we'll start again at the beginning.
to take my words and speak to them, to take our hearts and open them to your word. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated. <coughs> Peter and I were both born in Stockport and grew up in an area called Reddish. And when we married, I moved from house number six to house number 99. And if you walked round the corner from our house, you were in Denton. Now, for those of you a certain age, not the Denton of Inspector Frost, but Denton, Manchester. And at the centre of Denton is a crossroads. And on one of the corners was a pub called the King's Head. Now, around the country, there are many pubs called the King's Head usually in memory of Charles I, for obvious reasons, for those of you who know your history. But this one was slightly different. On the wall was a large mural of a footballer heading a ball. Now, if you live in or around Manchester, you are probably either a red or a blue. I grew up in a blue house and changed to a red when our youngest son took an interest in football. And for those of you wondering what on earth I'm going on about, but I know Malcolm will know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, you either support Manchester City or Manchester United. And if you live in Manchester, you know there was only one footballer who would have a pub named after him called the King's Head, as his nickname was the King. And as Malcolm just said, Dennis Law. Dennis Law was one of the few paying footballers who's played for both Manchester City and Manchester United and has still been thought highly of, well, most of the football, football fans of Manchester. He will always be known for his many goals he scored for both teams by heading the ball, hence the mural of the King's Head. Now, why have I told you that story? Well, today, as I've already mentioned, in the church's calendar is the Feast of Christ the King. And for those of you who know the church's calendar very well, you know it's actually the last day, last Sunday of the church's year. Because next year we start a new year, but I'm sure somebody will mention that next Sunday. Now, for most of my life, like most of you, I'm sure, I've lived under a queen. Okay, I was born when we had a king on the throne, but by the time I was three, he had died. And by the time I was four, we had Queen Elizabeth II crowned. Now, I've never met a queen or a king. The nearest I got to a member of the royal family was at the Royal Cheshire Show a few years ago. And I was there with the Open the Book team. And the then Countess of Wessex, who is now the Duchess of Edinburgh, came to open the show. And as she came into the tent I was in, I had on my hand a glove puppet of a bird. A bird that made an awful lot of noise. And we used to use it in this story of creation. My daughter has one of those, the then Countess said. And we had a chat about puppets and children, and it was like talking to a mum at the school gate. Not what I'd be led to believe, or not what I'd been led to believe, how you actually talk about to a member of the royal family. Now, I wouldn't call myself a royalist, but I do have great affection for the royal family. And I'm also a great fan of the uh, Netflix programme, The Crown. And for my sins, I did binge watch the last four episodes just last weekend. Watching these programmes I have a good idea how you should behave in the presence of a monarch. You don't speak to be spoken to, you bow and curtsy an awful lot, as well as a number of strange things. And this is where I have a slight problem with thinking of Christ as King, when I see how modern day monarchs expect to be treated. I will explain a little bit about that sentence in a short while, but I did wonder if our Bible readings might help us to understand a little bit more about who Christ the King is. Well, I have to be honest, when I read the vote, my, both, my, immediate, my immediate answer was, no, where is Christ the King in these verses? A shepherd, yes. A king? Well, not really. The first thing from our Matthew reading that always sticks in my mind is the shepherds with the goats and the sheep. In Jesus' day, goats and sheep looked very similar. In fact, according to my, one of the books I was reading, 
The only way you could tell them apart was the fact that, I forget this right, the goat's tail sticks up and the sheep's tail drops down. But in the evening, they had to be separated and the goats were a little bit more delicate than the sheep and couldn't spend the night out in the field, so they had to be put in a barn to keep them warm while the sheep could stay out in the field. So that's why they had to be separated. Well, what has the shepherd got to do with the king? Well, actually nothing. But apparently for the Jewish people, once they had crowned Jesse's son David as king, and remember David was a shepherd, the anointing just appeared stuck in the Jewish mind. Shepherd and king were linked. One who took care of his flock, whether the flock was livestock or people. If we look carefully in this passage, we will see that it talks very much about the end of time, the final judgment when we will all be judged by the king of kings, whether we're king or pauper, we will be judged. All of the humanity in many ways looks the same. No one can tell if we are followers of Jesus or not. It is only by the way we act, how we treat people, that we are known. Not just the fact that we come to church regularly, but the love that we receive from God and that we then share with others, regardless of who they are or where they live. That is how we will be known and something for us all to think upon. Our other reading was the letter from Paul to the church in Ephesus. Some years ago, I was at a conference led by the then, our then Bishop of Chester, Mike the Board, who said that any of the letters should be read as if they were a letter. You start from the beginning, you read it right the way to the back. Then you go back and pick out the interesting bits. Again, it might be reading a letter from a friend or family member. But don't worry, we're not going to read through the book of Ephesians just now. But the letter does start in a lovely way when it says, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the letter is not just from Paul, but also from Jesus. Something else to think upon, and I suggest you also ponder on the word saints. Have you ever thought of yourself as a saint? That's for another sermon, but just think on it. In these verses, we are pointed to Christ the King when it says, I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power for us who believe, that when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. This is the lesson to the church. And the church isn't just the building, the church is the people. And this letter was to the people of Ephesus. And this letter is to the people of this church as well. A letter of encouragement. It wants to bear, it is for us now, to know Christ better and to be more like him. That is what Paul wants for his church. And that is what God wants for all of us, his children. To know his son, Christ the King, in all his fullness. So I put a question to all of you. Who is Jesus to you? Is he the baby in the manger? Is he the child lost in the temple? Is he the carpenter of Nazareth? Is he the great teacher? Is he the healer? Is he someone you can talk to? Is he someone you can sit at the feet of and listen to? Is he the angry person playing in the temple of thieves and scoundrels? Is he the person on the cross? 
to be your risen Lord. Is he Christ the King? You may be asking yourself, okay Francis, so who is Jesus to you? Well, this is where we come back to what I said at the beginning when I said I have a slight problem with Christ the King. Not because I don't believe that Christ is King, I most certainly do, but most of the time Jesus is my friend. And like a good friend who listens to me, nudging on about this and that, sharing my problems, usually smiling at me, but quite often it gives me that look. It's usually when I've done something wrong or something I shouldn't have done and I need to get it sorted out. My favourite time with him is walking on the beach and paddling in the sea. He, again, is just smiling at me. So how do I see Christ the King? Well, over the years, every time this day comes along, it sets me thinking, I read Christ a lot, especially my Bible, don't always understand everything, but it does give me some answers to my question. Starting with the Old Testament. As you know, I'm a great fan of the Old Testament, and believe it or not, it talks a lot about Jesus and who he is. For some, that may be a surprise, but he's there from the very first chapter to the very last. And so spending time with him, I realise that he is my friend, but he's also the beginning and the end, all-powerful, victorious in battle, glorious in peace, not just a humble earthly teacher, which he is, but judge of all, king of kings, lord of lords, God almighty, Christ the king. Let the truth about Jesus penetrate your life, deepen your faith in him, and strengthen him, strengthen you, your commitment to follow him, no matter what the cost. Christ the King. Holy Father, just be with each one of us. Help us to recognise your son. Not just the baby in the manger to be thinking about a lot over the coming weeks but as Christ the King, Lord of Eternity, sovereign over our lives, judge in the throne in heaven, lover of each one of us. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In total humility, at one with the least of his people, Jesus the Messiah, or Christ, reigns as King with full authority and honour for eternity. Through Jesus our King, let us pray. As we celebrate Jesus, the head of the church body, we pray for all the members with their various gifts and ministries. We pray that even our weaknesses can be used to your glory for the good of the world. 
We thank you for all those who work here at St. Paul's, especially our vicar Olivia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all monarchs and heads of state be led in ways of truth and righteousness and recognise with humility that they are called to serve. We especially ask that they all concentrate on the global warming crisis and take their role far more seriously, otherwise our children and grandchildren will be left with no meaningful future. We pray for all shepherds, rescue teams, troubleshooters, and for all who work for the emergency services and work to recover the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we reach out to one another with greater love and better understanding. We pray for our homes, our relatives, our neighbours and our friends, particularly those who do not yet realise the extent of your love for them. We pray for all those who came into the building yesterday for our Christmas fair. May they come to know you over the coming days, leading up to your birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for all those in war situations and currently for Israel and the Palestinian people. We pray that the four-day truce holds and may be extended and all hostages eventually will be released to their families. We pray for all war-torn countries, including Ukraine and Russia. We pray that men of war will have the cloak of anger and power lifted from their eyes and see the Prince of Peace. May those who have been scattered far from their homes and loved ones be enabled to live again in peace and happiness. May the bitter and resentful find hope again and the confused find new direction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for all who are sick in body, mind and spirit, that your healing hand will be upon each one of them in the way that is right for them. We pray that here and now, in this place, those in need will feel the warmth of the Spirit upon them and know your healing. And we pray this too for the sick mentioned on our notice sheet and those known to all only to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift you, Father, those mentioned on our notice sheet who are no longer with us. Be with their families as they struggle with their grief. May the dying know your closeness and those who mourn their loved ones know for certain that your kingdom stretches across both sides of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving as we realise again the extraordinary extent of your love for us. Most merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. the college to death day. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and in the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns in you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. We say together the Lord's Prayer in the modern form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you're able, can you please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, which is number 448, Meekness and Majesty, number 448.
in Advent. Starts next Sunday. But Vivian's produced a book, so please take a note. You don't start reading yet. Not till we read some next week. You can flip through it to get, get a flavour of what you're going to be reading about. But I do recommend doing something. Advent is a time when we do reflect in the hustle and bustle of leading up to Christmas. And believe you me, I told my niece and nephew off on Facebook they wouldn't put their Christmas tree up. I'm sorry, it's too early. But we need to calm down. We need to think about what Christmas is really about. And Advent is that time to reflect on that. So I do recommend Vivian's book. She's very good, actually, doing them all together. The rest of the notes are going to sheet. Now, Vivian, do you want to say something? But, but, yeah, make sure everybody knows that book. Anybody else has any notices I should have said and I haven't said? Oh, it's got very quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I'm truly sorry about this, but there's nothing I can do about it, I'm afraid. Uh, my hip replacement operation is going to be a week tomorrow, so I'm going to miss uh, Christmas with you. So I'm really cross about that, but I hope you understand that, you know, I, I couldn't say no to the operation. I, I do need to get this hip sorted out. Um, so um, I, I'm just really grateful to our readers and, and to Matt and Nick and also uh, particularly to Veronica who will be you know, taking charge of all the services and Veronica has kindly agreed to take on extra communion services so that's, that's really good of her. Um, I think that just the one, the one thing we just need to, as from Pete to say, morning, uh, communion on Christmas morning will actually be a service of morning prayer. Uh, we won't be having communion, but we will be having morning prayer instead. But there will be the midnight, uh, obviously, on Christmas Eve. I think that's all I wanted to say. And, and you don't have to read the Advent book until next week. But I think Emma just wanted to get it sorted out and printed. And thank you very much to Emma for doing it. Um, the, the booklets are quite free, but if anybody wanted to make a contribution towards the co cost of printing, I'm not sure we wouldn't say no. Because there's more cost. I used to get this mic, so I think I think we're okay. Yeah. Has anybody had a birthday? Nobody? Oh, nobody's going to admit to having one. Okay. Right. We're going to stand for our final hymn, which is number 104. Oh, hang on, no. let me do the lesson before we go. Just realised because we'll be processing out all the way. I have to get all this. I'm all right with the service. It's all the uh, putting the going that I get confused about. So let's just uh, take a moment. So the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And the Lord turn his face towards us and give us his peace. Now we're going to start to sing half final hymn, which is 104, Christ 